Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Reaper Minis TV. Hope you had a chance to benefit from Reaper's October offer at their online store. If you got a trick, well then you probably know by now you got a rock. If you got a treat, you got some extra figures, so hopefully you made out pretty well. We're going to start off this episode though with a review, a couple of reviews actually, from Reaper's Legendary Encounters line. And this is their line of pre-painted plastic figures. And here they are in the blister. First up, we've got the Thornback. And it takes up pretty much the entire large blister pack there. And here we have the Fast Claw. A little bit smaller than the first one. And we'll try to get into them now without causing too much damage to myself or the blister. And sort of, sort of a clean cut. Enough to get him out. We'll tear this up a little bit, get him out, and try the same kind of operation on the fast claw. And we're slightly more successful. Alright, so here we got the two dinosaurs out of the blister pack. Uh, no base on them or anything like that. They are bendy plastic. You can see he bends and comes back into shape just fine. Pretty much the same thing here. He's got the little arms. All of it's pretty bendy except for the really thick parts. And here you can see the size comparison of these dinosaurs to... This is the Steampunk Witch from the Chronoscope line that recently came out. So quite a bit bigger than her and suitable for use as dinosaurs, I'd think. I wouldn't have a problem using them in D&D &D or any fantasy game that actually has dinosaurs in it. If you were doing an updated version of Isle of Dread, I think they would probably work out pretty well for that. Next up we have three pieces from the P65 line, and we've seen two of these before. The first one is a warg, so a giant wolf that you might see a goblin or some other kind of similar creature riding. The P65 version is $6.99. The Dark Heaven Legends version is $10.99. So you save a couple of bucks if you want to go with the different metal composition for the P65 Warg. Uh, detail, as far as I can tell, is all the same from both versions of it. So in my mind, no problem using the P65 one. The second P65 figure is another one we've seen before. This is the Exotic Idol, and it comes in two pieces. Here's the ugly front with the three eyes and the mouth in the belly. Reminds me a little bit of the giant idol on the cover of the old DM's Guide. And there's the backside. So it fits together pretty easily. I don't think you'll need to pin it or anything like that. You could use it in a dungeon as a diorama or as an exotic idol for your thief of the party to go try to steal the eye of and set off a trap or something like that, make it come to life or something. The left leg looks like it has a defect, but it's not. It is just sculpted that way to show some erosion or where it's worn down a little bit over time. With this particular figure, you're going to save a considerable amount going the P65 route. The Dark Heaven Legends version comes in at about $22, and this one's about $12.50, so a pretty good savings there. And then the last P65 figure is a male pit fighter. This one we haven't seen before. It's a single piece figure of maybe a an arena warrior or, like the name implies, a pit fighter. So I think it could do well as a player character model in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Could drop him into D&D. Uh, he's got a sword in one hand and a smallish kind of shield in his left hand. Uh, the pose is very good and action-oriented. Does need some cleaning. There are some extra bits of metal on it from the casting process. But overall, a pretty good dynamically posed figure here. From the Pathfinder line, we have two new Serpent Folk, and we saw one of them a little while back, but here we have an Evoker, so a Spellcaster, and this figure comes in two parts. In the picture, you can see that it's been assembled, but on the video, his left hand is still attached to the casting tab. That's just going to carefully be clipped off and put into place, not a big deal there. In his right hand, you can see he's carrying a scroll, and his tail is coming out from underneath his robes. 
Uh, I like the figure. It did have a little bit of cleaning that was necessary to it. There were some mold lines and a little bit of flash, but I'm not 100% sold on using it in my Warhammer Fantasy Battle Lizardman army, and that's only because it's a little bit tall to be used as a skink mage, and it's obviously far too small to be used as a slan mage priest. So uh, maybe it's just a style issue with me as a serpent folk or a lizard man I think it's outstanding the sculpt is crisp it's clean details are all really really nice on it so it really fits that bill well uh, I just don't know if I'm gonna drop it into my lizard man army and then here we have another serpent folk this is a degenerate serpent folk and he's wearing armor you can tell a difference between his scales and the scales or padding of his armor so a nice distinction there he has a one-handed axe in his right hand and nothing in his left hand it seems a little bit bare to me. I would have liked to have had a shield, or at least the option of a shield, in the blister pack or on the sprue attached to the casting tab. Maybe put the shield on if you want to, don't if you don't want to. It just feels a little bare to me. But like the Evoker, it's very well sculpted, and I think a bunch of these together would make for a very good encounter using Lizardmen. And now from the Savage Worlds line, we have the Hangin' Judge. This is a single-piece miniature of a spectral figure that's carrying a noose in his left hand and a pistol that has a pretty wicked looking blade on it in his right hand. He has another pistol that's over on his left hip in a holster and it has the same kind of big blade on the end of it. So from a realism standpoint, I'm wondering how he's going to get that out of there without cutting the crap out of that holster every single time. But when you realize it's a spectral ghost kind of evil cowboy dude, uh, then I guess it doesn't really matter whether he cuts it or not. It probably just comes right out. Anyway, uh, the Hangin' Judge is a pretty iconic character in the Deadlands game, so players and fans of that game are going to recognize him right off and probably pick up the figure. For me, since I don't play in a Savage Worlds or Deadlands game, and I'm just starting to get into Malifaux, I'm wondering if I could get away with using this as a proxy for a Hanged in a Resurrectionist army. I'm not sure if that's going to work out or not. But anyway, I'm thinking of doing that. Otherwise, in any kind of Weird West game or maybe a horror game, a Call of Cthulhu game based in the Wild West, you could get some good use out of the Hanging Judge there. And then last up for this episode, we have a Dark Heaven Legends figure. This is Dar Dimplefoot, a halfling thief. It's a single-piece miniature of, as you'd expect, a halfling thief. He's crouched over, and he has a heavy hooded cloak on with a dagger that's kind of stuck back a little bit in his right hand. In his left hand, he's carrying a bag of ill-gotten goods. And there's a feature on this figure that really struck me as being odd. Now, not odd in a bad way, just odd in a very different way, and that is our halfling is wearing shoes. And just in, in all of the games I've ever played or anything I've ever seen about halflings, you just don't ever see one in shoes. So, like I said, not a bad thing, just a very different thing. If you expect to see big hairy feet on this halfling thief, you're just not going to see it. But it is a good figure. I would recommend it for any kind of halfling thief that you might have in a role-playing game. Alright everybody, thanks for watching this episode of Reaper Minis TV. We'll see you next time.